Ship's Japan tsunami warning has been downgraded to less serious after having earlier issued a major tsunami warning after a series of strong earthquakes. Buildings have collapsed, tens of thousands of homes are without power, and locals are being advised to stay alert to any changes and follow instructions issued by authorities. I'm now joined by meteorologist John Hammond. John, can you tell us the latest, please? Well, the latest is that uh, well, the worst of, uh, of the tsunami threat hopefully be, will be receding over the next, well, three or four days as earthquake activity begins to die down. But over the next two or three days, as you've mentioned, uh, tsunami warnings are, are at their highest level. So obviously the authorities are all over this uh, and people will be uh, paying attention to those warnings and taking the necessary action. But uh, obviously for large swathes of Japan, the next two or three days are especially critical given the amount of earthquake activity that has been taking place over the last couple of days. Uh, seismologists are, are, are pretty good at this. They have a feel for whether that earthquake activity is going to uh, lessen or to intensify. And the consensus is that it is going to lessen. So I'm hopeful that uh, towards the end of this week, the tsunami warnings will begin to uh, lessen from that top level, which we're at at the moment, and people can get back to their their normal way of life in Japan. But as I say, the next two or three days are especially mm. critical. So tentatively, some good news coming out of Japan. Now, of course, there is a constant threat of earthquakes in Japan, isn't there? They're one of the most seismically active places in the entire world. That means they have one of the most sophisticated warning systems. They really do. I mean, thankfully, across the UK, we have nothing like that. We get the odd tremor occasionally, uh, which makes the headlines. But, uh, you know, that's absolutely uh, tiny compared to the, the huge tectonic forces which take place across uh, easternmost parts of Asia. It's part of the Ring of Fire. It's known as the Ring of Fire, which encircles the, uh, the Western Pacific. And, you know, it's very hard to sort of predict at longer ranges uh, when these uh, tsunamis, these earthquakes are going to flare up. But certainly once the, the, the seismologists can see the whites of the eyes and start to get the seismic activity uh, through on their meters, they then have a pretty good feel for how long uh, that sort of peak activity is going to last. You can see the footage at the moment of uh, what's been going, going on over the last day or so. But there is confidence that uh, if we can get through the next two or three days, then mm. things will begin to die down. But we're, we're in a, an active phase of seismic activity across the, this area of uh, Japan at the moment. So uh, they'll be very wary for further flare ups later on in January. But fingers crossed the worst will be over come the end of this week. And John, the Japanese authorities were telling uh, the Japanese living in coastal areas to evacuate immediately. They were saying every minute counts. Will those people still be evacuating as you understand or will there be some staying put now? Uh, I think I think the the, lar the large majority of the coastal population will be evacuating. Mm. Obviously, there will be emergency responders who will stay in uh, stay in place to to deal with uh, the very most acute of the conditions around the coast. Uh, but for most people, most members of the public, they are well versed in these sorts of evacuations. So I think that'll be taking place a pace as we speak. Uh, so that to, although we can't stop a tsunami. Uh, these sorts of seismic forces are unstoppable. Uh, most people will be getting out of harm's way over the next uh, few hours. Yes, because there was, of course, massive fears that this could replicate uh, previous earthquakes followed by tsunamis that we've seen in Japan. Yeah, the skill, though, is much, much better. It's, it's improved immensely over the last uh, few years in terms of the response to these sorts of events. As I say, you can't control tsunamis. You can't control earthquakes but what you can do is ensure that people get out of harm's way so i think the death toll from recent tsunamis has been far less than it was a generation ago because of the ability to respond and evade uh, the worst of those tsunamis along the coastal fringe so yes the vast majority of people uh, will be getting out of harm's way over the next few days well thank you very much for your time john hammond meteorologist and a very happy new year to you as and well you. right well let's go live now to ross feingold who is in taiwan Ross, thank you very much for joining me. So how seriously is this being treated in East Asia? Uh, very seriously. People are, are you know, as your pre previous guest mentioned, people who live along this so-called ring of fire, they're well aware of earthquake risk as well as tsunami risk. Uh, but uh, also to follow on what your previous guest said, 
the level of awareness and training as far as what to do in the aftermath of an earthquake, it does vary from country to country. Frankly, I'm speaking from Taiwan, where they're not as well trained or prepared uh, as Japan. And then the Philippines, which also uh, suffers from earthquakes, they're probably not as well prepared or well trained uh, as Ta Taiwan is. Uh, but Japan is is very, very good at this. Uh, the earthquake drills that, that even young students get in public school uh, and the, the, the uh, training that the safety uh, authorities get, whether that's in the nuclear industry or the fire and rescue services, Japan is very, very good at this. And that's why we see the, the near immediate uh, word from the authorities that people should evacuate to higher ground, get away from the coast, because the tsunami risk is very, very high in the aftermath of such a large earthquake. Ross, so that's very interesting that children from a very young age are taught what to do when a warning goes out and what to do if you're taken unawares. Uh, sure, and I think we saw a little bit of that in some of the video footage you had of people uh, shopping in, in supermarkets, and, and they're they're very quick to realize that this is an earthquake. You know, they don't they don't take. 10 seconds to figure out what's going on. They know right away that this is an earthquake and they know what to do, get low to the ground or ideally get into a doorway so that things don't fall on top of your head. Uh, but, but again, it just it, 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 these images do illustrate how well-trained people in Japan are. Yes, and it's amazing to think that there have been 50 earthquakes in such a short period of time in one country alone. Also, we've seen warnings of large waves in other countries, so South Korea, or so Russia, or so North Korea. Do those still hold, do you know? As far as I know, those still hold at the moment, just keeping in mind that the Sea of Japan, which separates uh, Japan from the mainland Asia, from China, South Korea, North Korea, uh, it's a relatively closed area so that the waves could bounce back and forth, although it's subject to other factors such as weather and the depths, depths of the sea. But certainly the waves could travel to one side or the other. And that's also why the tsunami warning is, is expected to last several days in Japan. Yes, and there was a huge international concern that this could could have and hopefully will not, as it stands, replicate previous earthquakes followed by tsunamis that we've seen in the region. That's right. So most famously, there was the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan, and of course the Boxing Day uh, earthquake and tsunami in Southeast, mm. Southeast Asia in 2004, both of which caused an enormous amount of destruction and unfortunately an enormous amount of loss of life. And, and for the 2011 earthquake in Japan, it also caused the meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant. So there's been a lot of questions about the safety of Japan's nuclear facilities in the aftermath of today's right. earthquake. But up to now, the, the uh, regu regulatory authorities in Japan, they've emphasized that the nuclear facilities have not had any impact. Okay, thank you very much indeed for your time, Ross Feingold, who is in Taiwan, and a very happy new year.